Hi everyone. Today as we start on to the atmospheric chemistry section of this module, uh, we're now going to start to look at the structure of the atmosphere. So let's go view the overview to start with. We're going to talk about the layers of the atmosphere, that there's four main layers, the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere and thermosphere. We're also going to talk about the main features of each layer, what are some, you know, where they are, what we find, and then also particularly going through the composition of the troposphere, which is the, the, the sphere closest or the part of the atmosphere closest to Earth. And that's where we're going to start. So let's have a look at the layered structure of the atmosphere. So you can see here, so we have the troposphere right down at ground level, moving up to the stratosphere above that, mesosphere beyond that, and then thermosphere. Uh, just one thing I want you to take note of, over on the right, you see this red line graph shows you the trend in how temperatures change as altitude increases, as we move our way up through the atmosphere. So you can see that we're starting off um, at relatively warm temperatures and then it cooling down and then to a point when it actually starts to tick back up again, cooling down again and then warming up again. Um, we'll go through exactly why that is as we go through, but then you can also see certain other features that we'd find in particular layers. Okay, so let's start by talking about the troposphere. Um, oh, and also the ozone layer is something that we would find around about that bottom of the stratosphere. That's the one of the main reasons that we talk about this in this topic. Okay, so we'll start off by thinking about the troposphere. Okay, so remember that's the area of the atmosphere or the section of the atmosphere closest to ground level. So it's somewhere between zero and 10 kilometres in altitude. Uh, it varies depending on exactly kind of where you are in on, on the earth and what the, the, the landforms are like, you know, different at Mount Everest versus, you know, in, here in Coffs Harbour, for example. Um, but that tends to be around about where we, it finishes. The troposphere is where we have all of our weather events. So the positioning of clouds, you know, wind, um, all those sorts of things occur in this layer. And that's because most of the air of the atmosphere, or it's the, by far the densest layer of the atmosphere. Most of the air particles are here, um, and so that, that's partly why. Also, it's because most of the water vapour that exists in the atmosphere is contained in the troposphere. And so you're getting cloud formation and then precipitation in the form of you know, rain or hail or snow or sleet or wherever it is, depending on the unique climate of that area and its um, latitude as well. Um, and also, it's where most aircraft will fly. Some aircraft can fly up in the stratosphere, um, so the, the aircraft that used to be around called the Concorde was one classic example, um, but most tend to stick into in the upper layers of the troposphere. They fly up as high as they can manage in order that there's a, a, a lower air pressure, a lower air density. It makes it more fuel efficient and easier for the plane to fly at high altitudes um, rather than down just about ground level. Um, so it's the highest air pressure because most of the particles, because of gravity, are attracted to the area closest around the Earth. And as altitude increases, the air pressure decreases. Um, that's one of the reasons that it's hard to breed, breathe at high altitudes. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the stratosphere. Okay, so you can see here a picture of a, a weather balloon. Um, so in a stratosphere, that, that the stratosphere extends from 10 to 50 kilometres in altitude. Okay, so it's above the clouds, um, so you know, above kind of the weather patterns that would happen. Um, one of the main things that we care about in the stratosphere is the ozone layer. So a collection of where of ozone gas molecules that, that kind of that form this sort of band, this kind of protective band, which is uh, responsible for absorbing a lot of the harmful uh, wavelengths of UV radiation and stopping them from, um, from reaching us here on Earth. Uh, and that's the context that we will discuss a little bit later in another video. Um, we also have weather balloons um, we, because they're able to fly up to that sort of altitude that they're able to monitor things um, from the, that sort of high level above the level of a lot of the weather events we're talking about. Um, and also, interestingly, as the stratos in the stratosphere, once we kind of we cross the boundary from the troposphere into the stratosphere, the temperature starts to increase as we go up. The reason for that is that there's actually very little um, mixing. In, in the troposphere that we get a lot of what we call kind of thermal mixing. So the idea that, that hot air and cool air are continually kind of circulating and moving around. But in the stratosphere, we kind of get above those sort of movement of currents, those convection currents. And so what happens is that as, it, um, as something down the bottom kind of heats up, it moves its way up, but there's nothing to cool it back down again. So as the temperature, in, as the altitude increases, the temperature goes up. Uh, so it's one of those 
those strange kind of quirks of how the atmosphere works. Um, now we're going to talk about the mesosphere. Now the mesosphere is actually um, the part of the atmosphere that is probably the, the least well understood because weather balloons can't reach up that high, um, that satellites uh, don't reach down that, travel that low, and so it's kind of in this, this kind of grey area in between. So the mesosphere extends from 50 to 85 kilometres in altitude. Uh, it's the part of the atmosphere where most meteors and comets would burn up um, once, you know, once coming in from outer space. It's also the place where we would find the coldest temperatures um, because we've lost that, that temperature kind of, um, you know, hot gases rising kind of feature from the stratosphere, which doesn't extend up into this layer. And we also are protected against a lot of the solar activity, which changes the temperature in the thermosphere. Um, so not only is it difficult to study, but it's also, yeah, things will experience lowest temperatures in that zone. But as we are increasing in altitude, the air pressure is still decreasing. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the thermosphere. So this is, yeah, 85 kilometres in altitude and beyond. Um, there, sometimes we talk about an additional sphere on the outside called the exosphere. Um, within our syllabus, we tend not to, to refer to it as much. Um, it just kind of, the, the boundary there and the, the meaning gets very fuzzy. Um, what we would experience is what we call the northern lights or aurora borealis is something that occurs in the thermosphere, that very kind of outside layer of the atmosphere where you're getting charged particles that come from the sun that, that travel in the solar wind that, that make, makes its way from the sun towards us, um, that then they kind of congregate around the north pole and then the south pole. There's a, a, a different version of it, but particularly around the north pole where we can um, see it more easily and you get these amazing kind of colourful swirls. So this image that you can see is actually Aurora Borealis taken from the International Space Station. Um, because the International Space Station and also shuttles as well, when, when the Space Shuttle program was running, um, they orbit in the thermosphere. So around about 100 kilometres in altitude. So still very close to Earth. It's, you know, it's still well within kind of our atmosphere, but at a level you know, significantly above the rest of the atmosphere. And the idea is that, that the boundary between the thermosphere or the exosphere and, and out, what we call outer space is generally very vague it, because the, the particles just become more and more and more spread apart as you go on and it kind of just fades into nothingness. It doesn't, there's, there's no kind of defined boundary. There are more definite boundaries between the other layers underneath the, the thermosphere where we're seeing a marked kind of change in their properties or their appearance. But we don't see the same thing with the thermosphere. Okay, now we're going to start talking about the composition of the troposphere, bringing ourselves back to back towards Earth. So having this is some data on the composition of the troposphere. What we're seeing is that we've got three gases up the top here that are measured in percentage, and then the remainder, which have the asterisks, are measured in parts per million, which is a unit of saying how many how many gas molecules per million molecules of, of gas mixture of, of molecules of air. Um, so you can see that we get down to very, very low levels um, with some of these gases, just to show you that there are things that are there, but they're present in very trace amounts. So that we've got four major gases that we're considering to be part of the atmosphere. Um, and so with that, we're thinking these top four. Now, carbon dioxide here, we're measuring in parts per million still, because it's still a very low number, but it's much more concentrated than even the next most, than the next highest gas, which would be neon. Um, and these days, the level of carbon dioxide, depending on where you are in the atmosphere, is, is beyond 400 parts per million. That's the sort of value which makes scientists very nervous when we're thinking about climate change, because it's at levels that are much higher than it ever has been in the past and at an accelerating rate, which is what concerns people. Um, now, water vapour is also present in the troposphere, but the percentage the, the varies, because it very much varies with altitude, it varies with um, the latitude, where it is on the Earth, what the climate is like? Is it near the equator? Is it near the poles? Is it desert? Is it, you know, is it in a rainforest kind of area? Because cloud cover and all that is very variable. So it's definitely present. It can be up to 5% in the atmosphere perhaps, um, but there's, it's not really worth recording in a table like this because it very, depend, very much depends on where you are. Whereas the composition of these other gases tends to be more uniform, that they can mix throughout the atmosphere to make the levels much more uniform. Um, yeah, so those are the four major gases that we have there. So they tend to be the ones that we concern ourselves with most. You can see that oxygen levels just under 21% of the atmosphere. So you know, over three quarters of our atmosphere is a gas that we don't, um, that, that doesn't really biologically do anything for us. 
um, but that oxygen level is really important. Um, and just to remind you that those asterisks are measured in parts per million and not percent. Okay, guys, so that, that's all for today. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.